Scott. And it will come hey, in damn. first of the book of the first Timothy, chapter six, and verse six. Read from somebody read from verse chapter six, first Timothy, read from verse six to verse nine. Okay, I'll read it. First Timothy chapter six, verse six. Yet true godliness, and this is from the NIV. Uh, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the, love of, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So this is uh this is our beloved Paul uh speaking to uh he's writing this letter to the uh, apostle uh Timothy. Uh Timothy was uh, a pastor, he was pastoring some churches out there uh in Greece where uh Paul started the church, founded them, and he was assigning people to uh pastor certain churches. So he's letting them know that true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Did y'all hear that? He said that is great wealth. What exactly does he mean? Contentment. Contentment actually means uh, in a state of peaceful or happiness. Did y'all get that? Contentment means to be in a state of peacefulness and happiness. Okay, so what it what is what he's telling us is he says, so if you have enough food and clothing, let us be content. He's saying, you know, we don't want to always be somebody going to God asking, Lord, do this, Lord, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you get 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 get? One thing about it is when you learn how to be content, meaning I'm peaceful, I'm at peace with what I got now. I'm at peace where my life is now. I'm happy, even though it does not mean that you can't still grow. But what he's saying is, wherever you find yourself in life as a believer, you have to find contentment in that situation. Are y'all hearing me? Whatever it is in your life that you may be passing through, you have to find contentment. What is contentment? Peace, a peace of mind. You have to learn how to find a peace of mind even in trouble. Okay? And how do we do that? We all know we do that by what? Prayer, supplication, prayer, getting connected with the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, and practicing all of the things of God that you can. Okay, so he's letting us know there's times that you're not going to be comfortable in your life, all of your life. So you have to understand when a person can show God, not man, can show God your father, that Lord, I can be in a midst of a mess, but I'm still going to be content in it. I'm still going to find peacefulness in it. I'm still going to have a peace of mind. I'm not going to just lose myself, lose my morals, lose everything I was taught, all because I'm facing adversity. I'm not going to have a mental breakdown because 
things are not going my way. I must find contentment, peace of mind. I got to find my peace of mind in this mess that I'm passing through. So he's letting us know if we can find and be content in the situation and our surroundings where we are, God will increase you. But if you never show your God, your father, that you can be content, I can have a peace of mind in the ghetto as well as the suburb. I can have a peace of mind when we ain't got nothing but hot dogs and bologna, opposed to having shrimp and steak. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times, no matter which way my life is going. If it's upside down, I will bless the Lord. If it's going good, I will bless the Lord. You have to understand as we walk in this world, especially as a believer, you have to learn how to be able to accept things that happen in your life and deal with it without running away from the Lord, without popping off on somebody, uh, without all of the anger, misplaced anger, popping off on somebody who ain't did that to you. Hello, somebody. Wake up, church. So he's saying, but people who long to be rich, meaning you always, all, everything on your mind is about money, 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 money. Every time you go to God about something, it's always about some type of finance, about some type of gain financially. He said, he said, when that is your goal, y'all, if that's what you really live for, I know a lot of people in the world. I work with many uh, men in the world that when I worked at the mortgage companies in New York and, and they were so money hungry, it's okay to be driven, you know, by your ambition and want to do better and get, and get higher in your position. But when you have the love for the money in your heart, you understand that means that it, you will always put that before God. Because you're not supposed to develop love for it. It is here to do essential things for us, but you are not supposed to develop love for the money. Is everybody following me? You are not supposed to develop an attachment to money or materialism things. Okay? So this is a warning. He said, and some people craving money. What does that mean? Somebody answer that. What is he saying here? What does craving mean? A craving is um something that you want, and it's like um that's what's on your mind. You can't. It's 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 like it's in your spirit to have that. It's 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 a desire. Yes. You longing yes. for it. Yes. 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 And it's always not a good one. <laughs> that's, why they say, that's why they say money is the root of all evil because the love of it, the love, love of money. money. People love the money, yes. Yeah. And it, it, it ruins things. Yep. Yes, it does. And he just said that. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and yeah, they forget where they come from. with many sorrows. Mm -hmm. People have money, they forget where they come from, and they, they think they people are beneath them and stuff like that. That's why they say the um money's the root of the evil. I understand yeah. what you're saying. I'm yeah. It. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So we understand we're not supposed to have love for the money. We supposed to, you know, we we need money because we live in the world. We and things cost money. We deal with money on a day-to-day -day consistent base. It rules the world, okay? But, you know, we have to make sure as believers, you don't develop an attachment, a love for the money. When that's all you think about. Like he said, the craving, the craving for it. Now, if you need money to pay your bills, that's different. A craving is just like what Monique and Crystal uh, described. You know, a longing for it. It's always on your brain. It's always in your mind. You're always talking about money, you know? You can't develop a love for the money, okay? We know the money is there to assist us in life, 
but we don't develop, you know, we don't idolize it, you know? That becomes your idol, all about the houses, the cars, the this, the that, all this materialism thing, and it will bring you sorrow, because that's what he said. All right, amen. Amen, all right. So let's um let's move it on to the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 13 but um read start at 10. Somebody read uh Romans chapter 15 verse 10 through 13. Okay. Again it says rejoice you Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the people extol thee, him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations, and him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So what is Paul saying? Paul said he's, he's, uh, He's uh, referencing to the uh, Romans now. He's he's witnessing to these Roman people trying to break it down to them because, again, these Roman folk, you know, they were used to having. It wasn't too many of them that was poor. So he said, and in another place, he letting them know the word of God, what the word of God says in the Torah. He said, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. He letting them know that, you know, although that y'all Gentiles, y'all not Jews, but now God has engrafted y'all too into salvation. Now y'all have a right to be born again also. And in another place, Isaiah said the heir of uh, the heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. Who's he talking about? This is in the book of Isaiah in the Torah. Who is Isaiah describing? Who is Jesus. the heir to David's throne? Jesus. Yes, he's talking about the Messiah, Jesus. So again, Jesus is all up in the Old Testament. Hello, somebody. So Amen. to anybody that's a Jew or no Jewish people, you let them know. Jesus is all up in your Torah. You need to read it. Amen. All right. And then he says, um, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill. Now, if you if you feel hopeless, why wouldn't you run to the Lord Jesus? You know, people run to pills, run to this, run to that. If you feeling hopeless, he said, the source of hope is God. He said, we'll fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. How many on here trust in the Lord? Raise your hand. If you trust in him, that means if you're going through something that's, you know, you cannot handle, you're supposed to be going to Jesus. You're supposed to run to Jesus. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, people running around here, a lot of Christian folk run around and they don't practice what they read. Hello, somebody. These yeah. people, believers have to practice what you read. He just said, if you will, he then you will overflow with confidence. Hope, if you feeling down and your confident level is down and low, you know, things are not working out. Maybe you can't get the right job. Maybe the kids are acting up. Maybe there's uh, financial ruins. You're going through bankruptcy or something to that nature. And your hope is low. What are you supposed to do? Somebody answer that. Trust in the Lord. Amen. But more detail or with demonstrating. So pray. What? yes, pray. What else? Read your Bible. Yes. Oh, very bad. 
Yes, amen. And talk to God about it, you know? And talk to God about it. Prayer is conversation with the Lord. You know, many people don't know how to pray, but you know, prayer is conversation with the Lord, okay? What you're battling, what you're going through. You open your heart up to speak to the Lord about it because only he can bring you your answer. You know, we have a tendency as human beings to go to the bottle, to go to this, to go to that, to go to, 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 they say, you know, I'm just trying to ease up a little, you know, I'm trying to take some tension, some stress away. Well, mainly you're supposed to run to Jesus before you open up a bottle. You're supposed to run to Jesus before you do anything. Many of us are not getting our answers because we're running to the wrong stuff. We're not getting help. We're not getting help. And that develop, that can develop into frustration, stress, anxiety, because we're not running to Jesus. He just said, then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Holy Spirit is the one that brings us what we need spiritually. Not no freaking rock. Not no freaking yoga. Not Amen. all this mess out there. All this occult practices people are doing up in the church. Amen. We are to run to the cross. We are to run to Jesus and let the power of the Holy Ghost run through you. Run Amen. through your mind. Run through your body. Run through your soul. Stop running and looking for other things to satisfy what you need from God. Amen. People run into their jobs for the answer. Worship in these jobs. Worship in these people. Worship in all of this mess in the world. But we don't take time out to say, Father, what do you say about the situation? Father, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until my appointed time comes. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I know you will bring me my answer. Everybody is just so worldly, doing it the world's way. That's not how we're supposed to do it. He just said, I pray that God, the source of your hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace. What is joy and peace? Feel shut up, boo. Joy and peace is when I get joy and peace is when I trust in the Lord and I give it to him and I take it off of me and give it to him because I know he's going to work it out. And I've seen him do it time and time. Amen. Amen. Peace, Amen. A calmness, joy, a inner, um, not, I wouldn't say like happiness, but it's a, it's a, um, it's an inner feeling where you know that uh, or you believe things are going to work out. Like, you know, happiness is kind of comes from external things, but the joy is comes within. Yeah, from within is, is how you feel and how you um how you perceive things. Yeah. You know, the joy. The joy of the Lord is my salvation. In the book of the Psalms. So the joy of the Lord is my ticket out of whatever I'm dealing with. Okay. Amen. That's my ticket. And how do I develop that joy? Not happiness. Happiness is like you said, temporarily. But joy is everlasting because it comes from God. Amen. And you develop joy. It don't just drop on you. Again, Everything that we go through in life, we have a process to get to that point. Is everybody following me? Amen. 
There is a process to get to joy. Just like you said, all everybody said, who commented, reading your word, doing this, doing that, getting your peace of mind together, getting your thoughts right, bringing up that hope level in yourself. Sometimes you're not going to have people around you physically that can help you out of stuff. This is why the Bible teaches us what to do to get it for ourselves. Amen. When you in a dark place in life, you got to reach down, 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 and you got to put all your trust, all your faith, everything about that situation. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. No matter if it's not changing or not, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to keep on trusting in the word of God. Amen. No matter what the situation is, I'm going to keep my trust in the Lord Jesus. Okay, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. I got you. Uh, okay, hold on. Chapter 2 and read verse uh, 20. Let me see. 26. Yeah, but let me make sure I want to start there. Um, okay. 20. 26, start at 25. 25, okay, I got you. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Amen, amen. This Hallelujah. is the King Solomon, and he's breaking it down. Um, he's saying, um, he said, I'm gonna start at 24. This is what, this is in the NIV version. He said, so I decided there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisf satisfaction in work. Then I realized that these pleasures are from the hand of God. Uh, perhaps in his earlier years, he thought it was him. Hello. Like when you are now born again, we in Egypt, we get, we go to school, we get degree. We think all, everything that we was doing was us, right? Although we were applying ourselves, but the hand of God was allowing it to happen for you. OK, so for who can eat or enjoy anything apart from him, the Lord. Why you think everybody's so miserable in the world? Why you think it's so much violence and all this murder and jealousy, all this darkness everywhere? Because they are separated from God. Amen. There can be no happiness, no joy, no peace of mind, no wisdom, no knowledge to do things right when you are separated from the Heavenly Father. He said God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. Hello? Those who please him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away and gives it to those who please him. This too is meaningless like chasing the wind. Hallelujah. Ha so what is he saying? He's basically saying right there, like I spoke on that prophetic word the Holy Ghost gave me some months ago. The Lord, he said, what did he say? Even, but if the sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away when they are not grateful, when they worship the wealth, when they don't acknowledge God, he will take it away and give it to the ones that please him. Hallelujah. And you know what? That goes for believers too, y'all. Like I said, that prophecy said, Holy Ghost told me, 
That's why we have to be careful. Whatever God is allowing us to obtain in this life, we got to be careful. Number one, like I said, all the stuff that he's blessing us with, good health, reasonable good health, good mind, bringing us joy every now and then, letting us experience how it is to be happy every now and then, a season of happiness, a season of getting, a season of planting, a season of everything. But when we do not show gratefulness, God will take it away. He will take it away. We can't sit up here and be blessed and receive all these blessings from the Lord and we don't demonstrate our gratefulness by, like I said, bringing a seed unto him. How can we sit around and not give God back what he has given us? Amen. Go shout out Abo. He's worthy. He's worthy. Everything that he has done in our lives, we have to show gratefulness. Not just saying it with our mouths. We have to demonstrate unto the king of glory. If God tells me to bring a seed every day, I will bring it with happiness. We can't sit around and expect all of this stuff from heaven to flow on top of us and we don't show God no gratefulness. By not paying your tithes and your offering, that's not showing God no gratefulness. It is him that you're looking to please, not me. When he's making ways out of no ways for us, when he's always on time, no matter what we're going through, he always has a ram in the bush waiting, waiting, waiting for us, waiting to work the situation out for us, waiting to bring us up another level, waiting to heal your body, waiting to heal your relationship. Thank you, Jesus. But we must show gratefulness. You have to demonstrate to the one true God and show him God you are God all by yourself almighty God and I will show it I will not only say it with my mouth I will demonstrate it among every person glory to God hallelujah so God is saying on today he wants the child of God to acknowledge him and demonstrate your acknowledgement your gratefulness unto the king of glory not just with your mouth amen all right let's move to the book of Philippians Woo, hallelujah I feel your holy ghost we must come together and understand this thing. God is expecting every child of God to know who he is. We say it with our mouth, but we have to demonstrate our gratefulness unto him. We have to let him know no matter what, go. if I'm in the mud, oh God, I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to give you what belongs to you. Even if I'm broke, I'm going to give a slug offering. I'm going to bring my seed so that the Lord will bless me and bless my whole family. I will be obedient until the word of God. No matter who's being disobedient, I will obey. Hallelujah to Jesus. And not all of this just talking, talking, but ain't doing it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. I'll read it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. 
I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's Paul saying again. Now, mind you, when Paul wrote the book of Philippians, y'all, he was in prison, okay? And he was waiting. He was on death row, okay? He was on death row and waiting for them to kill him, all right? But he was still, ain't, ain't, ain't this something right here miraculous? How Amen. in the world can you be on death row up in the prison, but you writing letters, encouraging people, telling Amen. people how to get what you need from the Lord and telling, sharing all of this knowledge with the people of God. How in the world? You talk about a selfless man. Selfless. I mean, I'm telling you, I'll drop the mic right there because I don't know no man who would do that, okay? So Paul is saying, because Paul was, he was 100% sold out to Christ, y'all, hello. It didn't matter. His worldly life didn't matter to him no more. It didn't care. His life, knowing that he had to face death, it didn't matter no more. He had to work through the fear factor. Y'all know that short fear factor? He had to work through the fear factor of it. So then now he's at the place of let me get all everything that I can get to the child of God. So what they need to make it to the promised land while I'm still here on the earth with them. This is why we can't take stuff for granted. We don't know how long we're going to be on this earth. So we got to take every opportunity that the Lord allows us and gives to us to do it the right way. Amen. He said that, he said, I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance, you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. He said he has learned. It's not going to just drop on you. You have to be learned how to, by what? Letting the Holy Ghost coach you into understanding how you need, again, this word content. I have been learned how to be content with whatever I have. He said, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Hello, somebody. You talking about a well-rounded person. And let me tell y'all, it's not a lot of people in this world, believers or non-believers, that's well-rounded people. A well-rounded person means that in every area of their life, they have mastered, okay? This is Paul, okay? He has learned how to master being content. He had learned how to master prayer because he did all those miracles. You understand? He was mastering in all those different areas of his life. This man was used to being having stuff because remember, he was a Pharisee before he got born again. He had education. He had money. He had it all. Okay? But that's why he's saying, I have learned I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And what y'all think the secret is? He said he has learned the secret. Hello, obviously it's a secret. And that's why you don't find too many people like him. Contentment. <laughs> Contentment and gratefulness. Amen. Don't forget that one. Don't forget that one. You have to learn how to be grateful, y'all. I'm talking, like Paul just said, he mastered that thing. He set his eyes out. He said, you know what? I got to go on this journey. I got to go to these heathen nation people. I got to do this work for the Lord by any means necessary. We always worry about comfort. 
Always, the child of God always want to be so comfortable. Oh, they want the bigger, the me they want, did you got a little church? Now they want a big old church. Why do you need a bigger building? The first thing people do when they get into the church world, they buy, they get a building, and you go, then all of a sudden, a year or two later, oh, we need a bigger building. We need a bigger building. What do you need a bigger building for? Because you got almost the same amount of people coming every Sunday. Now they need a bigger building. Now they need bigger cars. Now they got to live in bigger houses. Now they got to be, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Egos, yes. And pride, pride of life. life. Pride of life, yes. So he said, I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ. Who gives me strength? Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. Talking about because he was in prison. All right. And the Philippian people were very, very uh, giving people. They took care of Paul. They took care of Paul. They brought him food. They did a lot of stuff for him. Uh, a lot of those other churches did not do. Okay. So he's letting them know he appreciate what they were doing for him. You know, again, showing gratefulness, not just saying it, showing it. He said, for I can do everything through Christ. So without Jesus Christ, you can't do nothing. You may think you're doing something, talking about you living your best life, but guess what? At the end of the day, it will flop on you. Okay, because what it's not about the materialism, the outside yours, about the inward, the inner man. That's what salvation is all about, your inner man. Okay, Paul had the opportunity before he got saved. He lived rich. He he was rich. Okay, so then when his time came now to preach the go the gospel, he faced many many adversities because. He wasn't used to uh, living with not without eating and stuff. This man was rich. But what did he say? I learned how to become content in every situation. Hello, somebody. So, and you know what? It's so surprising because some people oftentimes in the world, you will see people that's broke, that complain more than the people that got some. Like, just ungrateful, just so ungrateful, like a spirit of ungratefulness. You understand me? You know, the more you give, the more they want. The more you do, the more they want you to do. You know, they never stop taking. Just too many takers in the world and not enough givers. You know, every time you turn around, they taking, taking, taking. But what are you giving? The world is made up of 85% takers. This is why poverty is at an all-time high in the church, outside the church. This is why low self-esteem is at an all-time high in the church, outside the church. This is why families are broken in the church, outside the church. This is why people always getting into toxic relationships in the church, outside the church. This is why people don't even know how to have a healthy relationship in the church, outside the church. Ain't been taught nothing, ain't been learning nothing, ain't been self-educating themselves, just sitting there waiting for somebody to do something for they could take, 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 but never give nothing. You never, you know, they never participate in giving of themselves. It's always give me, give me, give me. And remember, God makes the difference in every situation we go through. Without the Lord, you are lost, lost, lost. So we have to remember on today what God is saying, the Holy Spirit through the Holy Ghost is, number one, 
Um, he wants every believer, not just on the village, but every, whoever watches this video, every believer needs to bring God a seed offering every time you go to his house, okay? A seed offering. Then, number two, every believer needs to be working on how to be content in your situation. Amen. Being content, again, content means in a state of peaceful peacefulness in your mind, okay? This is why so many people have so much stress and so much anxiety and, you know, just always just up, up, up on, on a honey. Don't know whether they're coming or going. Because folks don't take time out. The, and, and you know what? The average believer is putting time and energy in foolishness when they need to be putting it into building themselves up. Again, like I said, even the things you're watching on TV, go to the Christian, go to the uh, Universal Faith Network, watch those programs. These series are biblical and it breaks stuff down where if you, when you see it, it's different. You can comprehend it. Your perspective of it is correct. All right. It helps you. It helps you. So all of the tools, like Jesus said, use the world's resources. Ain't that something I love? I love that scripture. Use the world's resources. Hello, somebody. You know, many a time in the church world, people are broken and they come and they and they and most people are in poverty situations. But the reason why they most of them don't get lifted up out of that is because number one, they lazy. Because they don't even take time to look and investigate on what programs that they have out there that they can even get on to get help. They may come to the church saying, well, I need help with my, my light bill. Well, that's fine and dandy, but did you look and tap into any of the resources first? We the That's what Jesus said. He said, use the word resources. Simple and plain. Are you looking into different programs? If you want to go to school, are you looking in for college uh, tuition? How can you get your college paid for? I mean, we got to stop being so lazy and get up and do stuff. There's a lot of programs out there that can help many, many, many believers that's in certain situations that they need help in if they just get up and research. And not wanting to be just what? A taker. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you give me this? Can you give me that? You know, we have to learn as children of the light to be wiser than the children of the dark. That means we have to be about our father's business. And our father business is our business. Hello, somebody. So God don't want us sitting around and we have resources and we're not tapping into any of the resources that he has put on the earth for us. But we running around, you know, you know, depressed because we can't make ends meet. And then on top of that, we ain't paying tithes and orphan the way we shouldn't either. So many, many people, I ain't saying y'all, but a lot of children of the light don't pay tithes and offering. That's the reason why some of them still stuck in poverty and going to stay in poverty. Because the Bible says you curse with a curse when you deny what belongs to the Lord. God said in the book of uh, um, hey God, can a man rob in the book of Malachi, can a man rob God? And the prophet said, Lord, how can the man rob you? God said, robbing me from my tithes and offering. All I'm saying, don't be no robber. Don't be no robber from God. Please don't. Give him what belongs to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless God on today for this powerful word. Always coming out 
with the with the with the bang bang, you know. Uh, discontent one, discontent one, honey. We have to learn. If we learn, like Paul said, he learned the secret. If you learn the secret to some things in the word of God, your life will work better for you. You will be so much better. You won't be always depressed, always downtrodden, always negative, always this, always that. You know, if you just take time out and put your energy where it needs to be, and stop letting the world dictate to you how much time you give God. How many people on here let the world dictate? Like, you do the worldly stuff first, then you go to God. Then you give God some time. When it's supposed to be vice versa, God is number one. He come before any anything in this life that I got to go through. God comes first. He come before the spouses the babies before everybody and everything. Once I get myself situated with the Lord, then I go and do what I need to do. Many, many, many children of the light are not prioritizing their time correctly. They're not prioritizing who God is and what he means. He's, they're not demonstrating it in their lives. And God is not pleased with it. God is not pleased with it. You know, just coming to him when you need something or, you know, when your body's broken up or whatever it is, you know, not taking time out to use the resources in the world. You know, God does not want the child of God to be a form of godliness. He wants us to know him, have a direct relationship with him. Um, even if you never heard his voice, you know, you feel his presence. You know, you he wants to have that type of relationship. You know, and not all of that all the time. Yeah, we go through that. I keep saying that here on the village. We have times of, you know, going through this, going through that. But that that should not be all the time. It should not be a consistent thing in your life where you're not paying tithes, where you're not giving an offering on Sunday. You're not you're not taking time to find out how can I get better in this area. You're not taking time out to research the resources that can help you in whatever financial difficulty you may be going through. You know, uh, again, the workshop, God gave us the workshop and all that stuff. So there's so many tools that you still have yet to use and do. And he's just saying don't forget your tools. In Jesus' name, okay, floor's open. Comment time, the floor's open. Praise the Lord, everybody. I thank God for the word on today. I tell you, like I said, each week I can find myself in the word. You know, I just thank God because um, we was speak. He was the word that came out of um, First Timothy, and you know, um, contentment. The word contentment came up. It's amazing because I was having this conversation earlier about um, um, contentment. I was talking about how. You know, if if you faithful over one thing, God will make you ruler over many. But in order right. to be faithful over that one thing, you know, um, you you gotta be committed to it. You know, Amen. they run they run hand in hand. You know, it's it's no way that you know you can't you gotta master something in order to move on to the next thing. Amen. So, you know, I just thank God for the confirmation that has come forth on, on this morning because I, I tell you, everything that was discussed this morning, you know, before um, we even got on prayer was the same thing that came across the pulpit on the day. So I know, I thank God for that confirmation and to know that, um, you know, that this journey, you know, we... God will send you what you need. He'll send Amen. you the tools. He'll send you the confirmation. So you will know that you headed in the right direction. Amen. So you're not on this journey alone at all. Even when, you, 
even when you think, because I mean, it's always something in the child of God's life that will come up that mm -hmm. will make them feel inadequate, that will make them feel like, um, wait a minute, I need to be doing more than this. And if it's yeah. not coming, if it's not coming up in your journey, then I don't know what journey you on because I'm telling you, it's con constant that there's something that you could be working on on your journey within Amen. yourself, working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. No, it's not all, it's not good. Don't think Amen. that you're all good because you are never all good. You don't Amen. ever forget that there's years of, of stuff that's in there that's not of God. Mm-hmm. Those things have to be worked out. It's no way that you just because you, you know, you gave your life to Christ, you know, you think that it's all gone because that was me at one point. But no, there's some things that have to be worked out and worked on. That's you know? right. So I just thank God for the, the confirmation on today. You know, I, I thank God for you know, coming in and showing us areas of where, you know, that there's some things that's got to come out. There's some yeah. things that need to be done. You know, yeah. there's some more prayer that need to go up. It's yeah. some other word that need to be read. So, Amen. you know, I just thank God for this on today because I tell you, it just gives you the option to um, keep it moving on your journey. So y'all know the words of prayer. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord and I'll keep you uplifted as well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You, uh, let me go ahead and read BJ. Amen. Monique is so right because like she said, it's always something we could be working at y'all to be better at. God, uh, BJ put up here, God has a purpose behind every problem. He uses circumstance to develop our character. In fact, he depends more on circumstance to make us like Jesus than he depends on our reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. So the circumstances in our life, I always say the Lord creates situation to bring revelation. Ain't going to be no revelation if ain't no situation going on. It got to be something going on for God to reveal himself to you. Amen. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, amen, BJ. Yes. Okay, anybody else? Yes, um, I just want to say I'm thankful for the word today. Um, like I always find myself or comparing myself to the scriptures that you guys read or that we are reading. And excuse me. And um like earlier this week I was questioning my faith. Like I don't know why, but I was questioning my faith and then I even asked me, um, Miss Winnie. I was well. I even said I was like, I don't even know why I keep going through stuff. I don't know why we keep having these hurdles and everything. She didn't say anything, but I feel like that I started hanging. I'm gonna I'm a back it up a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I started hanging with my friend. She's a um, she's a good person and everything, but it was like the timing. We was always off with our timing. So once I started back hanging with her, because she started doing my hair, but mm -hmm. I'm not a people person. So I didn't really start hanging with her because I was always about my kids. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said? I was always about just my kids. I, it wasn't nothing else. It was just my kids. It didn't matter how anything else in my life was, as long as my kids were good. So um, fast forward. We um we've been hanging with each other a lot, and um she was going through a lot of stuff because she had got out the military off of the same stuff that I got off the military with. But she got dishonorable. I have general under honorable conditions, so it's like she she got the worst um punishment. My punishment wasn't that bad, but her punishment on the other end was horrible. So mm -hmm. she don't get any benefits at all and everything, and she struggled for, like, a good year. She struggled, like, almost getting evicted and everything. I'm sorry for telling her business. But, mm -hmm. so, um, I was talking to her. Keep in mind, I talked to Ms. Monique. Well, I, we wasn't really talking. I was just saying stuff off my heart, off my head. And, um, I was like, I don't know why I keep going through, um, going through the stuff that I'm going through. I'm always going through something. It seems like every time 
I get over something, something else come in. And then she was like, friend, you just need to give it to God. You need to let it, and once you give it to him, you need to honestly let it go and put mm -hmm. him and depend on him. Because once you depend on him, then everything goes going to fall in line for you. Because that's what happened to me. She said, yeah, I still have hiccups, but I put everything aside and put God first. And I yeah. told God, I'm going to continue to keep you first. And once I kept him first, then it don't matter if, um, if like on the um, 28th and the bills due on the first, if I don't have enough, because by the first, some way, somehow I get, I get a customer and then I make, I make my rent. Yes. So I, was like, I was like, dang, like, oh my God. I was just like, um, I need to do that. Like I need to put my focus in God. Cause I don't know. When I say we we didn't hang, we hung with each other, but it was like I was always to myself. Like I always been in a little box to myself. But for us to open up to each other and actually communicate with each other, because I was asking, like I was asking Miss Monique, and then I was I was talking to her. I didn't think that she would know that um notice because it's like I wouldn't say I didn't think that she believed in God, but I didn't really think or really, you know, pay attention to know that she was even in God's corner. Yeah. So I was really thankful for that. Um, I hear God in my life. I, I feel yes. him in my life. Even if I don't physically see him, I feel him. And yeah. it's real. Holy Spirit is real. Yeah. Even if I have these hiccups, I know that, like, I know, once I keep my faith in God and yes. stand on his word and stand on whatever he got for me, I know that my end result will always be good. So yes. I say I'm glad that um I'm glad that I heard the word today. I'm glad for um for everything yes. that he's done for me. Cause he gives me the answers. I say this all the time and I'm gonna keep saying it because God yes. continues to give me answers. Even when I don't think that he giving me the answer, he gonna give he gonna show it to me. And if I don't see it, he gonna keep he gonna keep hitting it on the me until I understand. Yes. So I'm thankful for right. the word. And, yes. um, Amen. Amen, Shaquavia. Amen. Bless God for that powerful testimony. Yeah, and you just keep giving it to the Lord. You keep giving it to the Lord and let it go. Don't worry about the bill getting paid. You know that God will make a way for you somehow. And you have to keep that. You got to keep that by any Amen. means necessary. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you and praise God for the word on today. Thank you, Jesus. God knows yes. exactly what we need. And I say this every Sunday. He He brings forth, he sends his, uh, his message through his messenger to bring forth to us. And I thank and praise God for that on today because what I got out of it was contentment and gratefulness. And um, mm -hmm. y'all who know me, y'all know I was out of work for nine months. And um, mm -hmm. when I when I let when I got let go, it was it was around the time that so much was happening to me emotionally. Um, my mother passed away. I came back to work and then I got let go. Well, first of all, I moved to Charlotte from Raleigh, North Carolina, right? So y'all know how much it costs to move with moving trucks and down payments yes, on the apartment, first rent, last rent, you know. Then my mother passed away, so I had to travel out of state, expenses there. Then I get back and get let go from my job. So mm. only thing I had was, you know, what I had saved in my 401k. And I thank and praise God because had it not been for me listening um, I would have just been completely destitute. Um, like a year. You mean before what? That. They listening to what? The workshop DP when he was giving right, that information. Right. He told me what to do. He said right. not only put money in your four hundred one, put money in your IRA. And I, yes. I started doing both. So I was bringing home about five thousand um a month. So I was able to pay pay my bills out of one check, and the mm -hmm. other check I was saving. I just kept saving and saving and saving. So. When I got let go from the job, I was able to live off of that. But I, I had the whole household because my daughter was not contributing as she had 
promised to. Right? right. So I'm carrying all this. And thank God that I have friends. Um, that's why Kimmy always say, surround yourself with people who have something to offer. You know, right. orange shoppers aren't. If you mm-hmm. the shoppers are nice in the in the drawer, then you're doing something wrong. You need to get you need to get around people that have a more education, more experience, more yeah. wisdom. Why? So they can share these things with you. So I had a friend and she told me about the Navy Relief. I called them and they paid the rent for us uh, for a good six months. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just think it praise God. But if, if y'all remember, I was not um angry, I was Mm-mm. not bitter. I was Mm-mm. mentioning it every now and again, continue to pray for me to find a job. But God was God gave me that joy. I yes. had that joy and I was content. He and I had peace. Yes. And then he came and told me what I needed to do in order for him to take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I kept brushing it off and brushing it off. And when I was obedient and I did what the spirit of God told me to do, God opened up the gates of the windows of heaven and poured me out a blessing that I could not contain. I yes. thank and praise God for that on the day. If we are obedient, yes. y'all think that Sister Kim come up here every Sunday and say, pay your tithes, pay your offering. She ain't trying to beat nobody in the head. She wants you to, like you said, live in your best life. She wants you to be able to get these things that God has for you. But what do we do? Shut up, shut down, being disobedient. Don't want to. Let me tell you something. Even when I was not attending the villages, I thank and praise God that that was a seed that fell on good ground. Because from a young woman, I always gave tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. Never, never. And I have never been destitute. And I thank and praise God for that. Mm -hmm. I have times where I have gone through life where I did not know where the money was coming from. Like, I could not pinpoint the source. But I continued to believe. Even after my husband passed away, they had to do an autopsy, and they couldn't release the death certificate. So if they don't release the death certificate, you don't get no insurance or nothing. Mm -hmm. So I was out of work, destitute, got to pay a mortgage. So I know what I'm saying when I tell you I've been through these things, Mm y'all. Pay your ties. Pay your offering. God mm-hmm. is not keep coming up here every Sunday saying this to us. He wants us once you get once you get that 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 spirit of giving in your heart, then he can start blessing you. Because then why you're gonna become the lender, not the borrower. Mm-hmm. But you can't get there if you're not giving God what is what due belongs to him. him. If you yeah. think you're gonna work your way around it by doing the things that you want to do, you're not. You're not going to get it in its fullness. You may right. get parts of it, but you're not going to get it in its fullness because the fullness Amen. of what God has for us is not just monetary things. It is the peace of mind. It is the joy he gives. It is the contentment, mm-hmm. the gratefulness. All of these things come, and that is for the building of the saints, of the saint of God. You know, mm-hmm. so I thank and praise God for every single thing that he is teaching us on today. Yeah. Y'all. Amen. Let's eat this manna. Eat this manna and, and, and learn from what God is teaching us. Don't let don't continue in your life just being disobedient. I'm telling you, I saw that movie, The Rich Man and Lazarus, and show us my name is Crystal. That rich man bust hell wide open. Yes, he did. And and Lazarus went went straight to heaven. Well, he went yep. to paradise um, yep. to be to be with Abraham. And it, 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 when I was watching it, I did not realize who the rich man was and who Lazarus was because they told a story so clever. But when it got down to the end, I said, oh, my goodness, that's the rich man who said, let, let him dip his finger in the water and, and, and quench my tongue. Mm-hmm. And then he said, send, some back, send somebody back from the grave to tell my family. And Abraham said, if they don't listen to the prophet, uh, they wouldn't listen to nobody coming back from the dead. Y'all, don't be the rich man. Don't be the rich man. Listen while you have time. 
Yes. Listen to what God okay. is telling us. Mm-hmm. Pay your tithes. Pay your offering. Be content. Have a heart of gratitude. Mm-hmm. Because those are the things that God is looking for for us to produce, for us to eat and get down in our inner being. So yes. I think you praise God for that because God is soon to come. Yes. If you miss this, you're going to miss it. So mm-hmm. it's not something to take lightly. Take your it's salvation not. very serious. You, We take these jobs, we take these spouses, we take these children, we take everything more serious than we do our relationship with God. We got to give God what is his because why? He created us to worship him. And once you realize what you was created for, then you become part of God's divine will. So mm-hmm. I thank and praise God for that on today. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Bless your name, Jesus. Y'all continue yes. to pray for me in Jesus' name, and I will pray for you and your family as well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So true. Hallelujah. And no, and it is so sad because I felt so bad for the rich man because he was in hell. And he was just like, please, please, Father God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help me, help me. And there's no help. And that's what people don't understand. When you do it your own way, you're going to wind up in hell. And what they don't understand is no way out. You don't even get a break. You don't even get a time out. You thought your life on earth was hell. When you go to the real hell, you this thing on earth ain't nothing compared to the hell. Okay? Amen. All right. So next, anybody else? Anybody else have a comment? Gonna hop up in there. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, no, nah, this was uh amazing. And um shout out to Auntie for her testimony, uh Shaquavia for her testimony, Miss Mo, of course. Um, but you know, the scripture that really jumped out to me was the one that you spoke about where it talks about the resources. Um, of the world. Um, and I think sometimes, uh, you know, we take those things lightly. I know for myself, let me just talk to me. Um, you know, when God told me, you know, I was going to be debt free, I thought it was going to be from like regular stuff, like working, you know, like, and I, and I did. Right. But then I realized that God used something that was created in the world and turned it around and made it for me. And yeah. I was like, oh, man. So God, he, he he showed me as well. He illustrated to me. He said, now, all of the time that you was focused and the energy that you put into trying to figure out how you was going to do that, what if you utilize that time to now be on the offense? And I was like, ooh. And I think that's sometimes where we get caught up. Like, if you know that everything's, your needs are going to be met, God's going to show up, like, you should start acting like it. Because if you act like it, you'll get a budget. You'll make sure you're never in that situation again. So right. when God shows up and he has the abundance for us, we can actually live in that abundance. And sometimes I feel like I, I wasn't living in the abundance because I was I was constantly in a poverty mindset, thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And that's, that's me trying to control something. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just like... Uh, when, Miss Mo telling Shaquavia, you have to let it go. And that's that's what everything and that's what really paying your tithes and your offering is all about. Like you're letting go of control. You're saying, hey, I'm I, like, this ain't even mine. Like I'm trying to get to the point to where I don't want to use any of it. I'm just like, yo, Lord, who you what, what you want me to do? You gave me all of this. What you want me to do with it? That's Amen. what I'm trying to get to. I'm not even trying to. Lord, I know you're going to put me up and you're going to do what I need. and You're going to take care because you always have. But like, what do you want me to do with all of these resources that you are giving me? I just think it's time to stop, stop living like we're not trying to lose and start living like you want to win. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's like what I've been talking to my team about. You know, when y'all go out here and y'all play like y'all not trying to lose, we, we timid. You got pressure on you. Anxiety starts to creep in. Doubt starts to come in. All, all of these, these negative thoughts start to come to your mind when you're playing out of fear. Right. But when you play out of love, the love for the game, the love for God, when you play out of love, 
you start to do things and you get at you get out there, you start doing moves. You're like, man, I didn't even know I really had that. But right. you're, you're loose, you're free. And I believe that's what Jesus came for us. He came so we can live like that. And when we live in it, we hold on, oh Lord, I can't give this because I gotta pay this and I got well, how long are you gonna live like that? How long are you gonna keep on yeah. saying stuff like that? Like you gotta get out of that mindset of just living on the edge and knowing, okay, well, God's gonna show up. Okay, if you know he's gonna show up, what are you doing to make sure that that never ever happens again? And now when he shows up, now you got the overflow. So right. you know that's that's what I had to focus on, and I had to get a, get that type of mindset. Yes, Amen. To God be the glory. Yeah, you know one thing I've learned with serving the Lord: if you just do what God tell you to do. Boy, you will learn so much in life. You will learn so much about your own life. You will learn like, why did not do this sooner? Why did I wait so long in my life to even do this? You know, you, you'll realize how much you've been missing out on and the way that you were thinking and, you know, but it's different when you're being told how to do it the right way. You're being coached, you're being, you're being taught, coach. You, you know, sitting down at the village, you know, you get a lot of therapy here. So there's no reason why, you know, it should be such a big problem. You know, I feel like, you know, just be obedient, you know, give God what belongs to him and he will take care of the rest. But the whole thing of it is, it's not just the monetary. That's what people keep focusing on. It's, it's, it's because God is saying, if I'm all of that to you, then why would you have a problem if I said, bring me a seat? You know, if I'm all of this and that to you, why is it a problem? This is what God is saying to the believers out there. May not be y'all, but I'm saying what the Holy Ghost has given me to say. Okay, so as anybody that is a born again believer, that is that is a very essential part of your walk with Christ. Just to have to be obedient to his word. Things that we can't, uh, you know, figure out and work out, but you know, bringing a seed offering unto the Lord, that's something every person up here can do. Every believer in the world can bring a seed to the Lord, whether it's $2, $3, $4, $5, $5 whatever it is. But God has a problem when, you know, all these believers out here saying this and saying that, but they don't even bring a seed to the Lord, unto the Lord, you know? Like, it makes no sense at the end of the day. What are you doing? So, it is very important in order to get happiness, peacefulness, and be content in your scenario, in your situation, you have to be obedient. Amen. All right. Anybody else? I'm on the phone, Kibby. I had a, a little uh, interruption with the family. One okay. of my cousins, she, she lives in my Uncle Charles' daughter. Yeah. She lives in Pennsylvania, and she's married, and her husband is beating on her and stuff like that. So she's up here now, and I'm at the laundromat, and she came, and she was just in the car crying to me, so I had to turn the phone off. And she oh. was crying, 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 and she was saying, oh, I need help, I need help. And I just told her, I said, you got to trust God. I said, you got to just, sometimes, you just got to, like you said, you got to be content, and you yep. just got to do what you got to do. You got to just take your kids and go. Like, why would you That's just keep putting your kids to that? I'm not right. going to go all off into her personal business, but right. I just finished praying for her, Kimmy. And yeah. I just told her, you know, I'm, I just told her I'm here for her. She needs me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt good that God gave me that to say to her. I didn't yeah. know what to say to her. She just came out of nowhere. She was just in my car crying her eyes out. So I, right. had to her. So I just want to um, ask the villagers to pray for my cousin Jasmine and her okay. two kids because her husband is beating on her. And she lived in Pennsylvania. She done left and moved with the man. You know, you know how people just do. Yeah, things. yeah. And 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 now she's starting to realize that that's not what she wanted in her life. So I told her, you're gonna have to regroup. You're gonna have to. I just told her the same thing. You're gonna have to be content, and you're gonna yeah. have to do what you gotta do. So I, I thank it. God that He gave me the strength to tell her that. So, yeah. You know, God just pray for my cousin Jazz because I feel bad for her, but you know she made her own bed. But now she yeah. just gotta get herself together. And Amen. You know, I know I'm off the topic, but you know that's all right. That I needed to speak on that. So yes, yeah. amen. My, my family strength. Thank you. 
Yes. That's all right, because God is using you to help somebody. Yeah, Amen. I don't even know where that, where that came from. I just started talking about, I mean, I know where it came from because I believe in God. But I'm just saying, for me to pass the, the nugget on to her, she was yeah. looking at me like I was crazy. I'm like, that. Yeah. You just gotta yeah. be content. You gotta you yeah. can't let you can't dwell on the negative. You gotta just mm -hmm. be content. You gotta like um GP just said, you gotta have your game plan. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So just do what you need to do. Get your game plan going on. You ain't got to go home and argue and fight with no man. You That's know what right. you gotta do. Do what you gotta do and just That's keep it. moving. And That's keep it moving. Doing. Not trying, yeah. So Amen. That's what I have to say. I could go on and on, but I don't want to interrupt the call. So just y'all go ahead. Amen. I'm, on, I'm on the call. I'm on the call. But God just used me just now. And I felt Amen. good about that. Praise God. Praise God. See, she being a giver. She's giving good counsel. Hallelujah. See, see? Look at the villages growing. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Yes, I want to just give thanks to God for the word. Yes. Um, just thank God for um the word uh that touch. I like the part that you said, you know, like everybody eight like some you said a percentage, like 80% of the world is takers. 80, 85% of takers. 85, that's a lot. <laughs> yes. Oh, takers. Wow. And you know, that's what my focus is this year. I'm now I want to end up this year giving more. Mm -hmm. instead of, you know what I'm saying? And I, that means with seed and everything. Yes. You know, I've been I came a long way, you know. Yes. Now it's time for me to go ahead and that's a good part to come in this year just giving, giving and giving. And instead yeah. of, you know, because sometimes you know, we come from a long time of trying to see what, you know, like we conditioned to, okay, you you know, you get you try to get the most you can get. But right, it's, you right. know, Jesus didn't come like that. He was like, he oh. said, I come. I come to give, you know, that yeah. he come to give life, he come to give salvation, he come to give mm -hmm. himself. Even mm -hmm. the father gave him son up, you know what I'm saying? Yes. They would Had give us, they mm -hmm. were giving all the whole, they still give it now, you know, after Amen. we still, uh, you know, mess up and, and, and then fess up and then get up and, and, and keep it moving, you know, he's still giving grace and mercy, mm -hmm. goodness. So, you know, that's a, um, a good, thing that be thinking about this week find a way yeah. to give and not be a taker and um Amen. I, I like that you know because that's uh, uh even like um people i have around me i noticed that about my um uh, my prayer buddy she's you know giving and giving and giving and giving and i don't never hear her talking about people bringing back to her right. and um you know but you know but the good thing about it no matter how much you give and nobody give you nothing back god always giving you his best Amen. You know what I'm saying? Just like, um, you know, like uh, people that uh, you know, just just giving him. You know, I, I the word the word is teaching us that today. I want that's one of the pieces that I hung on to because it's the part that I'm I'm dealing with now. You know, just to be more giving mm -hmm. and not take not take, but just be a giver. And I like Amen. that. And you know, and um, try to. And you know when you do stuff and show other people how to do it, yes, that's yes. another thing too, like demonstration. You know, because um, yeah, you know the people need to see somebody. Um, I um, you know, I remember one time I was somewhere giving somebody some food and something to drink, and then some other people came behind me and started doing it too. I was like, wow, it just starts. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus the one, the first one doing it. So we always got to remember that. And um, you know, it's just a good word today. I loved it. And I thank uh, God for it and all the testimonies. Just pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless Amen. God. Amen. Bless God. So I'm so happy that everybody up here has, you know, is falling on good ground. Uh, did you want to say something, Sherry? Okay, she might be not able to. But I just want to say um, thanks, everybody, for coming out. You know, um, it, it's the Lord, the spirit of the Lord that leads and guides us through this world, uh, through this journey of life. And, you know, Shaquavia, you just have to 
you know, uh, we thank um, Sister Monique for guiding, helping, steering you, giving you good counsel. And that's what we're supposed to do, guys, as true believers. We're supposed to help each other, especially the babes. Y'all know I put a lot of focus on that, especially the babes. You have to, you know, emphasize and maybe try to, you know, every now and then stay in touch with them, making sure they okay. Because the enemy plays a lot of tricks with the babes. So I'm just grateful unto the Lord for his word, for his instruction, his leadership. And we are just grateful. And, you know, we're not just saying it, we, we, we're we demonstrating it. Because this year, um, you know, when we get ready to come into, what are we, in 2024, the Holy Spirit already told me 2024 is about to be a year of demonstration. Ain't going to be, it's going to be little talking. It's going to be much demonstration. Little talking, but a lot of demonstrating, okay? So I want you guys to get in that mindset now because he already told me, come 2024 with the believers, the household of faith, it's going to be about demonstrating, demonstrating. God is like, now it's time for you to demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate. Uh, it's going to be less talking and more demonstrating. Amen, amen. So I'm trying to get y'all minds, you know, on that now. So when the time comes, you know what I'm saying? You'll be prepared to demonstrate certain things. Like Deacon said, when he started doing it, somebody saw him do it. They started doing it. When you start demonstrating stuff, it does, um, you know, it, it people will come behind you and try to, it spreads, you know? So we want, you know, if all the negative stuff in the world can spread so widely, we want the word of God, the right way of doing stuff to spread. Okay, so in 2024, y'all better get ready because this is demonstration. This is going to be demonstration year. We're coming out of 2023 with a lot of talking. Ain't going to be that much talking going on no more. It's going to be people getting healed, people this, people that. It's going to be some demonstration going on. Hallelujah. All right, so we thank God on today for this wonderful word. And everybody for giving their interpretations. We know that God is able to do whatever we need from him. But again, it is a covenant relationship between us and God. So there's things that God looks for us to do. He expects us, the child of God, to do because it's in his word. So we have to make sure we're lining up with the word of God. Amen. Amen, villages. All right. Somebody go ahead and give us our benediction. So my one give the benediction prayer. I'll give it. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for this meeting of the saints, Father God. We want to yes. thank you for bringing us together one more time to lift your name on high and to worship yes. you, Lord Jesus. We ask that you please forgive us, Father God. Have mercy on our souls. Forgive yes. us of our sins and all of our unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, we thank you for your teachings. We know that you send these teachings, Father God, to teach us, Father God, to stay mm -hmm. on the straight and the narrow path, Father God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that on today, and we love you for it, Lord. Had it not been for your direction, Lord Jesus, we would have been uh, ran astray by now, Father God. So we thank yes. you for that. We thank you for your Holy Ghost, which God yes. and leads us and into all truth, Father God. Yes. We thank you for taking the time to come and see about us today, Father God. We felt your presence. We know yes. that you are with us, Lord. We thank yes. you for teaching us the things that we need to know to fortify yes. our spirit, Father God, yes. in these last and evil days, Father God. You are giving these teachings so that we can be sustainable, Father God. If yes. we can just think on the things that you have already spoken to us, Father God, whether we have food to eat or food not to eat, Father God, that we find contentment in our state wherever we find yes. ourselves, Father God. And we thank you for teaching us that today, Lord, because yes. every word that you teach us, Father God, your word will come to pass. And we yes. need to learn these lessons, Father God, so that we take everything we learn, all of your word, Father God, hide it in our heart so that we may not sin against you, Lord. We thank mm -hmm. you for that today, Lord. We thank you for loving us, Father God. We thank you for being our father, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for 
blessing us in the ways that you do. Father yes. God, please keep us all covered under your precious holy blood. Protect yes. us and our families um, yes. as we go forth on this week. Father God, please be with us and continue mm -hmm. to guide and direct our path. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And Father God, let me just say, uh, we want to add on that. Father God, we want to ask you to bless uh, Kamiko's cousin, Jasmine, her um, domestic situation. Father, help her get out of it. Help her be safe. Help her and lead her and guide her. Let her listen to the good counsel that comes her way and let her know that she has to look out and do what's best for her. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So God be the glory on today. Thank everybody for coming out. And um, we'll be back here up uh, again, back up here on... Um, Is Tutu still on the line? No, I think he left because he was at work. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was at work, but he at least he stayed on long enough to hear the word. But yeah, um, he, on, he, he had to go because he's at work. That's okay, fine. but yes, but... I thank everybody for coming on. And y'all, like Crystal said, a prayer, hide it in your heart, you know, so that we can stay on the straight and narrow. It's not, God is not giving us all these lessons just because he wants Amen. us to adapt and he wants us to obey and follow. Amen. All right. Amen. So we'll be back up here on Tuesday for Bible study. I see everybody on Tuesday night for Bible study. God bless y'all. Amen. Okay, thank you for the prayer, family. Thank you. Yes, yes.